instinct. The feeling. The force brought us together. We're not alone. Good people will fight if we lead them. People keep telling me they know me. No one does. But I do. Long have I waited. And now... Coming together. Is your undoing. What, uh, what are you doing there, 3PO? Taking one last look, sir, at my friends. <laughs> Confronting fear is the destiny of a Jedi. Your destiny. Flash, bump, da 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 da. Da 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 the second you hit the button to record, I got a headache, and I don't know if it's because we have to talk about this movie or if it's just because of the day. If we had to watch one more Star Wars movie, <laughs> you'd have to put me in the hospital I for a uh, galaxy far, far away poisoning. <laughs> I know I, the, that people excitedly sit and watch all these. And to be honest, when I scheduled this... I was kind of already fatigued on the whole notion anyway, it's, but I wanted to I wanted to I wanted to do it. I feel like it's been a roller coaster because there have been moments that I have been so happy that we're watching them and then moments where it's the last thing in the world I want to keep doing. After a certain point, it's just a lot. I'm going to spread franchises out a little bit more, maybe do them more in six pack editions in the future. We were kind of going on a, uh, it's not something we usually do, but we were kind of going on a cultural bandwagon, a pop cultural bandwagon yes. with the May the 4th shit. And I was like, May is what they have deemed to be Star Wars month. A lot of the movies released in May. So fuck it. Let's just talk about all of Star Wars. And look, and it's not that I, I think most of these movies are fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just a lot. And so much together. Next week will be 
in a whole new theme. Uh, movies are gay too. And we're watching a movie that um, came out in like 1938. And I'm so excited to watch something that isn't in space. I'm yes. so fucking pumped. <laughs> I've never been more excited. And yeah, this is all a volunteer job. I understand. We're do we do this to ourselves. But we're completists. We're not gonna get halfway through the month and chuck it. We have to do it. If we're gonna do it, we do it. We're we made the plan. We're gonna stick with the plan and we forced ourselves. And we forced like that's the name that's the name of the month. But we also went through these with the idea that this is probably gonna be it for watching these movies, right? The, these last two sequel trilogy movies are, these are the, I've watched the, these are the second time I've watched these. And uh, a lot of memories have come back. Yeah. Uh, since that day we walked out of the theaters. Looking back on all of Star Wars. If you could only ever watch one of these again, which one do you think would be the one you would revisit? You know, our highest rated ones are the 77 movie and Empire. So one might think that I would pick one of those. Mm -hmm. I don't think I would because I've probably seen those movies more than all the others. Throughout your life, yeah. This may seem strange because this is one of our lowest scoring movies. Oh, I know what you're going to say. But Phantom Menace. I knew you are going to say. You've watched, you've gone back to that one. I have gone back to that and I've sat through that movie because I understand it's not very good. It's, It's so bizarre. It doesn't even matter if you love or hate the movie. Yeah. It has the weirdest cultural resonance. In all of Star Wars, there's just something about it that sticks in your mind. Mm-hmm. For that reason, it maybe is, in a lot of unintentional ways, the funniest of all of them. Fair. But to be honest, well, I mean, we graded it. It's like a C. Mm-hmm. And it, does, it it earned its C. But well, we've said many times, just because we like something the most does not mean it is the absolutely. best. Absolutely. Things we rate lower, we might love more than stuff we yes. rate it higher. Yes. There's a, yeah, there's always a difference there. Mm-hmm. And, but now we've. Come to the end. Mm -hmm. We're here to discuss uh, Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker from 2019. And uh, I guess this movie was a reaction to the last movie because they brought back J.J. Abrams to direct. And it's written by Chris Torrio, J.J. Abrams, Derek Conley, and Colin Trevorrow. And starring Daisy Ridley, Adam Driver, John Boyega, Oscar Isaac, and Ian McDermott. Yes, the, the Emperor is back. We learn in the... Opening scroll that there was a rumor that the Emperor returned. Well, he let out a message. It was like a message in his voice. We open up on... It's so weird that that it's like, oh, the Emperor's still alive, and we get it in a scroll. Then Kylo Ren uh, goes to the the, the planet, Exegol, because he's tracked the Emperor down with like a device that he found. A Sith Seeker or something? A Sith Seeker. and And there it is, like Ian McDermott and his... Emperor Glory, he's very, very much an older man now, so they didn't have him moving a lot. They actually had the character, like, rigged up to some big mechanical arm type he, thing. Yeah, he's gone beyond, like, having robot parts to where now I don't think he can survive unless he's hooked up to that machine that moves him around. So he seems so vulnerable and yet so fucking powerful. His fingers are, like, falling apart while yeah. he's talking. And he... Raises from the ground of this planet Exegol, like a whole fleet of star destroyers. Like he raises them all up from the earth. Like they crack through the earth. Like he raised starships from the dead. And I'm guess that everyone manning them is also raised from the dead. Hard to say. They could be the people that maybe, maybe this whole time, this whole 20 years that he's been rebuilding, maybe he's been at this place, which is like this Sith temple, right? There were th- hundreds of people in that room with him that were his loyal followers. So there were people there at the end. Yeah, so whoever that, those that, folks that, are... That scene reminded me of like Bo's Afraid. Remember when at the I end of the... I thought the same exact thing. Where it's like, when you're looking, it's like, are those people in the audience? And you can't really tell, but they move around and make yeah, noises. Yeah. I thought Bo's Afraid also. That's hilarious. Bo's I, Afraid, a better movie than this. He he raises fleets of spaceships from the Earth as though they had been buried and dead. Mm-hmm. Zombie ships. They're zombie star destroyers. Okay, right. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Emperor is still telling him he has to bring her him Ray so that Kylo can be the new Emperor. It will be yours if you do as I ask. Kill the girl. 
end the Jedi and become what your grandfather Vader could not. He says he's going to give him everything. This movie feels like it is a reaction to the way people reacted to The Last Jedi. I, yeah. Which I kept going up and down in the ratings, but we've settled on a 7.5 for that. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't just a little overdone, I think it would have been a it solid could have, eight. It could have even been higher than that if it had had like maybe 40 minutes cut out Come of it. Come back on that scene. That ro uh, one, one of the consensus complaints on that is that the Rose rescuing Finn scene is dumb. Especially after Poe Dameron was getting lectured for being so fucking mm -hmm. reckless and stupid. Well, and it's that cheesy as fuck line of like, we're going to win by... Caring about each other. The gang is all together proper, like Poe and Ray and uh, C-3PO, the whole gang, BB-8. Mm -hmm. um, they're just hanging out in the Millennium Falcon. Leia finished Ray's Jedi training. And they were like, Ray, you got to go with us and fight. And then, yeah, they were all together. Honestly, I don't really remember how this movie goes like they have to go fight they always have to go fight they've got to find the other device they got some more intel they always get intel right and he is on exegol and no one knows where exegol is it's not in any star map and so ray's like oh wait a second i read the journals of luke i don't know how she got them i guess she stole them before he burned everything I, up i feel like that is also a counter to the what you know i don't know if ryan johnson really it seemed like he was trying to push some boundaries. I don't know if he successfully explained it because yeah. they're not going to expound upon that. It's almost like a lot of the subplots from Ryan Johnson's movie is completely ignored, including the 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 romance between Finn and Rose. Oh yeah, they're just they're just good friends now. It was so funny that they were where Finn was like, "Rose, last chance." The general asked me to study the specs of old destroyers so we can stop the fleet if you find it. If yeah. when. Sorry, Rose, you're a part of a Ryan Johnson subplot. Yep. You won't be doing too much in this movie. Yeah. Sorry, and, so sorry. And so you, and so they could actually say, because there were a bunch of books, one of them, the only one they referenced was Luke's journal, but you could in the future say she somehow rescued all of the texts. She took a couple of books she when she left the eye. So That's what you can gone. say. So yeah, yeah. the whole, uh, I felt like going to the books was almost like a, this isn't the second yeah, one. Yeah, I agree with you. And so, because, yeah, same. And so she brings it to Leia and she says, Luke was looking for this. There was even a drawing of it. It's like this little pyramid-shaped thing that takes you to Exegol. And she said, you know, Luke was al had almost found it before he fucked off, right? Yeah. And I, so I guess it's been known that Exegol is where the Emperor, why would Luke would need to go there if he didn't know the Emperor was there? Yeah, that's there? not why but Luke even Temple. ran away. It is the Sith Temple, though. Yeah. So maybe he was like, I got to go there and destroy it. Who knows? So, because so like they have their Jedi Temple where he was hiding. The Emperor's been hiding in the Sith Temple this whole time. So. The vague gray area of the Force that was explored, it is now truly back to like a black and white kind of thing. Yeah, scenario. and they go to this lovely planet Whereas the last place that Luke was looking for this, it's a clue that they have to find that will tell them where the key is to get to Exegol. And so it ends up being a knife, like a dagger, like you said, but they go to this and it's this wonderful festival happening and these people yeah. are so sweet. And this is when you get the scene of this little sweet little alien lady, like wanting to meet Ray and saying like, welcome and tells her her name and Ray's like, I'm Ray. And she says, and C-3PO's translating, she basically says, I would love to know your your family name. Mm. And Ray's like, I don't have one. Now, in the last movie, it's like, Ray's like, I'm from nothing. I come from nothing. Yeah, even uh, Kylo told her that. But now it seems like, oh, she might be from something, but it's a mystery now. There's a whole rigmarole where the... In the first couple uh, sequel trilogy episodes, I kept calling it the New Order. Mm-hmm. First but, order. but it's called the First Order. And once Palpatine raises the fleet, it's called the Final Order. So the Final Order uh, tracks them down because they're all over the galaxy. And, and so, guess who helps them? Lando Calrissian. Oh, that's right. And uh, I forgot Lando was in this. I mean, sure, why not? It's actually kind of amazing that all of those people were still around and able to do this. I know we lost Carrie Fisher in, during the making of these, but it is 
they couldn't have waited any longer. You yeah. know, like they needed to do it now or not if they were going to bring those folks back. Yeah, and we'll uh, get to Carrie Fisher in a minute. The way they kill the character off in the movie. I mean, I'm a little sympathetic because obviously she passed away and so that's going to change some things. She kind of takes her own life almost in the sacrificial move, which we'll get to. Mm -hmm. But they find a, they do find a little knife and when they're on this planet, they go into like a sand pit and that's where they find like an old ship and this guy that they're looking for. And Ray sees the ship and she's like, oh, I know that ship. And when they go underground, Ray heals some snake thing that killed everyone that fall, fell in here. But come to find out that... But now we know she has healing powers. That her parents were trying to save her by leaving her on Jakku. And they went off on this ship with this guy that they tracked down. And someone had sent this guy to come get her. And they ended up leaving the planet without her and her parents got killed. But as they get out of all that, the, uh, the final order are up their ass... And they managed to um, capture Chewie, capture Chewbacca. And there's this weird standoff between Ray and Kylo Ren, who's in his ship. And he tries to kind of run her down, but but he's testing her at the same time. Mm -hmm. And she does this cool like flip. She's the most a, powerful Jedi of all time. The Jedi powers displayed in this movie are so all over the place. Like, they might as well be gods. It's like in Dragon Ball Z when they can just do anything. So, like, what is even going on? It yeah. becomes weirder what they don't do after seeing everything that they can do here. Yes, like, there's moments where, truly, it's like, why are you climbing? You could obviously just, like, propel yourself. You could fly, basically. Because Ray is doing these they're things. They're healing. Those, they're reading minds. I, I feel as though Ray, she has no preconceived notion of what is possible. Right. And she's also inherently very powerful. So is Kylo. But it's like truly she just it's almost as though she looks at it and goes, I could try to do that. You know, let me just see if I can heal it. Let me see if I can lift all these rocks like she's never done it. But she's just like, maybe I can. And then she can. That's kind of her whole character. Yeah. Even this deep into the move, the movie, she still feels like a blank slate in so many yeah. ways, despite all that she displays or whatever and so Chewie's on this transport ship we only see one transport ship uh load them up and take them off and then there becomes this thing where she's trying to she stops the ship in the air she's holding it we've never seen this like straight up just stopping a ship from leaving oh orbit no with that's the force. a lot and her and kylo are doing like tug of war with this ship that Chewie's supposed to be on and then Force lightning comes out of her on accident mm -hmm. and destroys the fucking transport ship. And it would appear that Chewbacca died. And this is the first clue to who she really is. And what's interesting here is that I remember seeing this in the theater and thinking like, oh, they killed Chewbacca. And that's an interesting way to do it because now mm -hmm. she has this guilt, this power that she's uncontrolled. It's never convincing that she's never not the goodiest goody two shoes in the history of Star Wars. But in that moment, it felt like despite her, she can have the best intentions and yet accidentally just completely do be completely devastating. Absolutely. So which bring it's not it, it goes beyond like a moral question. Yeah. And to be like, holy shit, like this is a good person, but she could accidentally just really screw things up. Yeah. And that seems like a really sweet idea. And then we cut like a few scenes later and Chewbacca is alive. Yeah. We never saw two ships. We only saw one. And truly, they, they actually say, there is a line that says, he must have been on a different transporter. Okay. God forbid we can't just be done with all of these original shove-ins here. So Like, dumb. I love Chewbacca as much as anyone, but that, for a second, I thought this movie was giving me some real weight. And then they took it away. Because because the scene right after is really good. Because you do have the goody-goodiest two shoes in this whole thing is really Finn. And so Finn is just like, everybody's sweet. He just thinks everyone is full of goodness all the time, right? And he comes up to Ray and he's just like, I know you didn't mean to do it. I know you. And she turns and she's like, everybody keeps saying they know me, but I'm thinking that no one does. And even like her, like she could have had a dark moment. But you're right. She doesn't even get to have... And, a dark moment. And Poe is Poe is 
cool as shit in the second one. Yeah. He's just kind of like... Bic- he's like nothing. It's a bunch one. of bickery quirk talking between them. I think when I when it comes down to certain things I like, it's just the small things. It's always like the small things that are fun. Yeah. Like the little mechanic dude. Yeah. And they have that dagger and they can't read the inscription. Something happens and C-3PO... <laughs> has the information but there's something about his programming that doesn't let him just say it they have to rip it out of him but it'll wipe his memory and what's probably the most touching moment the true touching moment in the movie is when he says goodbye to all his friends what are you doing there 3PO taking one last look sir at my friends Because the mind of C-3PO that we've all known, I mean, he's been wiped before. He got wiped before the original trilogy, but he's getting the full wipe. And the only thing I thought actually worked as being funny was from this point on when he kept referencing everything as though it was the first time he had ever done it. My first laser fight. But that was the only attempts that I felt like worked. I also really like Boba Frick. Bobo Frick, the little the tiny little guy. The little dude, yeah. yeah. The little bitty dude that, that gets the stuff out of his brain. I adore that little guy. <laughs> they go to another planet where, and it's supposed to be like some Poe Dameron backstory, but it's very like soft. Where, when he used to be a spice when, trader. Yeah, they're like, did you know he used to pretty much be Han Solo? Wow, really Surprise. original way to present that character i guess you know Mm, we see his ex-girlfriend yeah who's always in a mask but it's carrie russell playing this character who hands him a coin that allows him to bypass some empire and they get onto the ship so basically kylo and his knights of ren have come down to this planet to try to find them and they have gone up to try to go get the dagger because it got captured. And that's when they figure out, oh, we can also save Chewie. She yeah, does find the dagger and whatever. She and Kylo have a mind fight. Yeah, and they end up going, they end up re- knowing that they have to go to some area in the indoor system where the second Death Star exploded and crashed, right? Yeah. And they go to the the planet in a, a planet in the indoor system where the Death Star has crashed and it realizes that it's like a Goonies thing where the item they have is mapped out by looking at the Death Star. But thinking about logistically here, so I'm just assuming this is some ancient Sith knife. No, it can't be. If it's based around the ruins of a Death Star. I like, think the Emperor made it. I think the Emperor had it made and he had he had two secret <laughs> keys set for some Sith in the future to find him. Why doesn't the Emperor just take the artifact and hand it to who he wants? Why doesn't the Emperor just talk to them? You got he a could puzzle truly knife. reach out anywhere in the entire galaxy and be like, Kylo, come to me. Yeah, this is another case of we're seeing the Force do so many unbelievable things that, again, it makes no sense what no one is doing. Well, and this is also the part where... But this puzzle knife is only like 30 years old. The, the Emperor made it in secret after yeah. Return of the Jedi. He really went out of the way to create some kind of treasure hunter shit. He really did. And then and then that's when these folks ride up on these creatures that are sort of like horses. And they meet them and discover that these are all former stormtroopers. Like yeah, what happened crew. with Finn happened with an entire battalion of stormtroopers. Mm. They all went to their first battle and every single one of them laid their weapons down. So more for the action figure fodder, extra characters thrown in, dumped in. Are they very layered or presented in any real specific way? Not really. We get to know one of them a little bit and there's like a teaser at the very end that makes you think she and Lando are going to go on an adventure, but I don't fuck the fight TV show down the road. I feel like you can't trust any throwaway line in this movie. No. Truly. Ray and Kylo Ren are having it out on the ruins of the Death Star after they find the artifact and they have to leave Ray because Ray keeps running off and Poe and Finn wants to stay for Ray, but Poe's like, she's is stupid to stay if she's not going to like run with us, right? Yeah. Ray and Kylo have their big uh, lightsaber battle on the ruins of the second Death Star. 
and that's when it's presented as though Leia decides to reach out through the force or something mm -hmm. and compel her son's heart to turn and it distracts Ben Solo and Ray gets a lightsaber like a, through his guts. A mortal wound. But then Ray heals him. And he and and he's and he's filled with light. And he's filled with light. She runs the fuck away and then he has a conversation with his dad who I guess he's Who is not a Jedi, but they say he's a memory. You're he's just a, a memory. memory. Well, I'm your memory, son. Sure. Okay. Oh god. Why wasn't his mommy there? A Although her body didn't even melt away until later. It was weird. That's the thing. It, it's presented like what she did was a sacrifice to get mm -hmm. uh to help turn him back. Mm -hmm. But why didn't you do that the whole fucking time? Why didn't you do that the whole the whole time? Cuz she knew it would kill her. I don't know. She kind of was like this is the only thing left to do. Again, I'm a little sympathetic cuz she passed away. 1000%. So And 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 you know what? Honestly, I won't judge it on that. I would much rather the, what they did them do that then try to somehow extend her or make her this like cgi you know well, like they, they kind of do that a little bit well they do we'll it a little bit this. they do it a little bit throughout the yeah, whole thing yeah. you know but they let her go after that kylo ren has now been solo and he has turned now when adam and po is the general adam driver uh he was on some podcast they were asking him about the movies and what he knew about where it was going to go or whatever. Because mm -hmm. they are kind of controversial in hindsight. People have a lot of opinions on these. And Adam Driver had said that when J.J. had pitched the idea of his character to him. I had an overall arc that he, in mind that he wanted to do. Which, you know, then changed. But his idea was that almost the opposite journey of Vader. Where Vader starts the most confident, the most... Uh, you know, committed to the dark side, and by you know the um, the last movie, he's he's the most vulnerable and weak, and he yes. wanted to start at the opposite, where th this character was the most confused and vulnerable, and by the end of the the three movies, would be most committed to the dark side. So the, I tried to keep that arc in mind, regardless if that wound up not being the journey anyway. The second movie was not even written at this time. Yeah. By the time you get to Rise of Skywalker, it's obviously completely different than what he claims was yeah. pitched to him there is a, a precedence for this notion of the dark guy being uh turned to good it happened to vader at the end of the original uh but, but we did what but the 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 prequels were of course um him going into the dark side but it is interesting how everything is compared to vader which i found it to be in annoying at first because it seems like we're seeing so many people more powerful than him at this point but that is kind of the point of a legend right it's not actually vader it's really uh, darth vader's look and pr that really overcomes more than like anything he actually did right especially for this is one of those things where it, it matters when you saw it and how you saw it and Darth Vader was one of our first big bads. Yeah, that's true. You know, he was so larger than life. And then at the end of uh, Return of the Jedi, it's like, oh, he's a pale, bald dude. Yeah, everybody was like, what? <laughs> what? Maybe they did. But also, he was like, Luke, I am your father. Maybe he was a little demystified before the prequels, but okay. there is a part. I believe there is a part where you do see like the back of his head when he's putting a helmet on, and it is like white. But Something whatever, like that. But I don't know. You know, one of the things that this is also when he tells her, right? Like, you are the granddaughter of Palpatine. Yeah, she finds, and she she ends up going to Exegol because she's got the item. After she knows this, where yeah. to go, and she does go and confronts Palpatine directly and he's like long have I waited for my grandchild to come home I never wanted you dead I wanted you here you're my granddaughter. Yeah, but it's fucked. Because, like, basically he's like, I never wanted to kill you. I wanted you alive because I want you to kill me. And when you kill me, I'm going inside of you. And every other Sith Lord that has ever been will be inside of you. So in the last movie, when they're talking about how the Force doesn't work when it's in these structures that should be something for everyone. Mm-hmm. 
well, we're back into strict bloodline forces here. It's like, oh, it's going to be the Palpatines or the Skywalkers. My mother was the daughter of Vader. Your father was the son of the Emperor. What Palpatine doesn't know is we're a dyad in the Force ring. Two, then a one. If you're any kind of a third party in this Star Wars galaxy universe, that maybe you should just kill all the Palpatines and all the fucking Skywalkers. And kill anything that's like a Yoda creature as well. Just yeah. kill all of those things, truly. Well, and she's mad and she wants to go kill Emperor Palpatine because he killed her parents. It just seems so weak. Like, it is the very conceptually, weak. I mean, Star Wars has never been deep. Convoluted, maybe, but never that deep. Mm -hmm. But this seems... Almost like it's reacting to, um, what do they call it when they do test screenings for audiences to determine oh, what they sure. would like? Yeah. Like they went like frame by frame and they're like, oh, Chewbacca's dead? I don't like that. I don't know if I'm going to go watch this movie if Chewbacca's dead. And they're like, oh, uh, well, he's alive. You didn't see the the, the, the second transport ship, right? Mm -hmm. That's what this movie feels like. Oh, Ray, oh, she's not just from nothing. She can't be a, a another thing. Uh, uh, she's the granddaughter of uh, Palpatine. Oh, and yeah. he's back. Uh, you remember the, the Emperor, yeah. right? He's back. Oh, and, and, and Ray can't kill Ben. They have to fall in love. Yeah. I'm not against their connection. I'm not either. I kind of I... think that they did convince me. That they have a connection. I do. I think so too. I like. I, I really think they are. They are the Romeo and Juliet of <laughs> yeah. the Star Wars universe. Like he's a little Hamlet too, a little Macbethy in there. She helps to lead the rest of the rebellion fleet, in which they're hoping that they're going to get a lot of backup. But everyone is now on Exegol fighting zombie star destroyers. Well, they followed her there. So basically when she went, she was like beaming out the directions. Yeah. So they followed her, but she's like down there fighting the Emperor while they're up above. Well, and well, well he's like, strike me down in anger so you can take my place amongst mm -hmm. and rule all of this while they're fighting, again, I think zombie star destroyers. Also, this is when Kylo shows up. How? They all left him completely alone in the middle of an ocean on a broken down <laughs> Death Star with no... She took his fighter. Yeah. Like, so I don't know how he got there, but he his, got his there. His fighter was gone before he even got to that planet. Like, he was... That's true. But she took what he flew in on. Yeah. And flew the fuck away. But anyway, he shows up. And so she has just a, sort of, like, agreed that she is going to kill Palpatine to save... He basically said, if you do it and you're in charge, you're also in charge of this fleet. The only way to save your friends... Yeah, you can make them stand down. ...become the all-powerful Sith Empress. Kylo Ren, or he's been solo now, he does show up and kind of helps to overcome. And how does she end up killing uh, the... Doesn't she, like... Yeah. No, it's like double lightsaber, well, reverse yes, the because, lightning against him or something. Yeah, so what happens is... First, he like pulls both of them up and he's like, oh, this is even better. I'm I don't need to, to be inside you of you. Kiss. Because, no, he's like, I'm going to take the energy, life energy from both of you and revitalize myself. And then you're both going to be dead and I'm going to be. Yeah, they're. Their dyad. I'm going to keep going. Their dyad, <laughs> their is, dyad is special. He doesn't realize until they're standing next to each other that they're a dyad. Oh, yeah. What is he good for? He doesn't know shit. Uh, again, apparently. you can and raise so Star Destroyers from the dead out of nothing, and yet you're, you'd are suddenly like, oh, dyad. You know the one thing he did do, and they did talk about this in the original, is that I guess he, he did die. He says he died, and he came back. So he, he was able to do that thing he told... Hayden Christensen he could do but yeah. anyway so then he like throws Kylo off the side and and he's saying to Rey you cannot beat me like she gets up she starts finally hearing the Jedi Master she hasn't been able to hear them and like she's all hearing, of them find the light Rey you're not alone Rey alone never every Jedi who ever lived lives in you the force surrounds you Rey let it guide you feel the force flowing through you Ray. let it lift you rise Ray. throughout the oh, entire then, like, franchise even, like, sam jackson like yeah. mace window is even, even like the deep cut ones that Someone, i don't will even get, know their names yeah the, they'll get their disney plus series later totally. right and they're all talking to her like we're with you you've got this get up get up rise rise whatever and so this is the rise of skywalker so she like stands up and he's like you can never beat me i am all of the sith and she goes well, I'm all of the Jedi. And so she has her lightsaber, and then she gets uh, Kylo's lightsaber. Double-blading it, reversing the lightning back into Palpatine. And it's Luke's and Leia's. 
lightsabers. That's another thing that's annoying. Oh, when she goes there, back and talks to it, Ghost It's Man. presented... Who who tells her? Oh, it's she Luke. She goes back to the island right. and, and says she's going to stay Luke. there forever. Spirit Luke says, oh, um, this is Leia's lightsaber. Now, you might be saying to yourself... We never in our life saw Leia wield a lightsaber. We know she's a little force sensitive. The... And they fucking tacked on this little side bit story. Leia told me that she had sensed the death of her son at the end of her Jedi path. She surrendered her saber to me and said that one day it would be picked up again by someone who would finish her journey. Oh, this is Leia's lightsaber presented with no emotional weight whatsoever. Just invented lore as a rationale to give her something that it feels like, no, which is actually feels completely meaningless because you have no backstory except for like a, a flashback scene to set yeah. this whole thing up. That she had a lightsaber and now Leia's lightsaber is yours. It's so dumb. And you have to, I mean, you have to assume that Leia trained as a Jedi because she's training Rey. But doing why it. wasn't she doing lightsaber battles? I don't know. She didn't, she didn't have to. She didn't need to. She didn't need a lightsaber. Also, you guys, they spent billions of dollars on this. They don't keep the lightsaber colors consistent. Okay. That is so annoying. No, we were incorrect. Oh, we were. I asked the internet. Okay. Because I noticed that the lightsaber colors were all over the place because we were under the impression that Luke's lightsaber was destroyed in Last Jedi when Rey and Kylo were playing tug of war with it. Mm -hmm. The one they broke was Anakin's lightsaber, which Luke had until he got his arm cut off in Empire Strikes Back. He loses that lightsaber. Right. Well, they had found that was Anakin's lightsaber from the prequels. And so Luke had lost it, and they had found it for the sequel trilogy up to that point. So the one that broke was Anakin's original lightsaber, not Luke's lightsaber. Okay. And so when we're when we assume she has Leia's lightsaber, uh, Luke was actually training with the green lightsaber that he was using in Return of the Jedi. So I I I was a little confused at that. And I know I just gave you a lot of information that we never have to think about again after okay. we end this episode. But yes, technically... You realize you're going like this the whole time you're talking? These okay. are my lightsaber tricks. <laughs> uh, but technically, they they did get that... Con we thought we had m seen a break in continuity, but they actually... It was well, actually right. I will say that honestly just speaks to how very too much is going on. She fries him. Yeah, he's dead. Emperor and dead. he's dead... And but ben that comes, kills her. That it kills, kills her. When she dies. So Ben comes and Ben heals her, and then Ben actually fades into the force. Yeah, and he dies. I thought it would have been so funny if they kept being resurrected. Oh, they do kiss. If they kept resurrecting, waking up to see all the others dead, and kept <laughs> resurrecting each other just over and over and over again. He gave everything that was left for her to live. I don't know if Adam Driver was open to coming back or if he was always going to be written to be killed. I mean, if he went full villain, you figured he would have to die at the end. But when Ray died, I kind of, when I remember seeing it in the theater, I was like, oh, you know, like a sacrifice, especially since she's so fucking powerful, like the sacrifice yourself kind of thing. But we will get new movies. I don't know if it's going to be a trilogy, but they're, they are making a star, another Star Wars movie focused on Rey, who's trying to uh, make a new Jedi Council, I guess, or something mm, like that. So okay. I'll probably never rewatch these, but maybe we'll watch new ones. I would, I would be interested in watching new ones, not in the theater. When we can watch him at home. I think oh. it does make more sense that Ben Solo sacrifices himself. Though. Yes. Even C-3PO, sweet moment of him losing his memory is totally doesn't matter because when they get back to where Leia is, uh, R2-D2 just like uploads him to his last memories before the mission. Oh, right. So, so all he doesn't remember is the decision to give up his self. So the dramatic weight behind yes. that is just Doesn't gone. matter. Might as well just scrub doesn't it out. Doesn't matter. This movie is, um, it's cowardly. And do all it's the It's a cowardly Sith, movie. The Sith people in the stands, all those hordes of people, did they? I thought they were zombies in the reservoir. I mean, I don't know. They I don't, don't know. make it clear. It's just like, and the ideas at play are so distracting to 
what 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 to any measure of a cohesive story yeah and yeah it it does feel like this is this is what disney star wars is it's just not it's it's like focus group like nonsense there's nothing brave about it yeah. any in every moment that seems brave is undone in this movie everything that seems like it will have true lasting effect like literally cast members have to literally pass away or just vow to never work for them ever again or whatever for them to actually do life-changing events to certain characters. It would have been really sweet in in life, not the movies. It would be sad they if they had even, let Chewie die because they Peter couldn't even Mayhew, let Han isn't stay. That his name? Yeah, he. I, I think he's he no would, longer with us. Right, I believe. And he's gone. letting that character also go is sort of just saying like we're not going to do this without him. Yeah. But now they're gonna probably put they're gonna put him in the next movie. Seems like Chewbacca is just around for a while. I mean, you could put any tall guy in that. I mean, he's like two hundred and forty years old. I guess R two will always be around, but now there's BB eight. Oh, they they had a little cone droid, Do or something. Yeah, his name was Do. So anyway, this was a letdown. Yeah, that's fucking weird way to end a whole month. Yeah, weird way to end a trilogy. Yeah. I mean, it all looked okay. Like as far as how it looks is okay. I do think uh, Ryan Johnson framed the action a lot, frames the action better than JJ does. But um, but yeah, this is it. We're gonna lay lay this franchise to rest, and uh, not even Emperor Palpatine can come back and resurrect our chances of sitting through these movies once again. <laughs> no. We've seen all the best ones many times, and um, we're just gonna let it go. We're gonna let. The internet just emotionally tear at its own chest over the details of however they feel about this movie. I'm not going to go around and say things like, oh, Disney ruined this or talk about how I would fix this. Look, George Lucas willfully sold this to Disney. This is the result. I'm not going to change his hands all the time. I'm not going to come up with little stories in my head to make it make more sense or to fix it. It's a good movie or it's a bad movie. And this one? It's a bad movie. What are you giving it? I'm going to give it a 1.75. Oosh. This is not the movie you're looking for. I'm going to give it a 2. So that is a 3.75. Oh, and we forgot that Ray uh, goes to Tatooine to live in Moisture Farm and dubs herself Ray Skywalker. Skywalker. Oh, yeah. It would have been funny if Uncle Owen's bones were still there. Because Luke never cleaned it and they just walked off and no one ever <laughs> bothered to show up. At a 3.75, this is a D tier. I believe this is, um, wait a minute. This got the exact same score as Caravan of Courage, an Ewok adventure. <laughs> I do think this movie is a little bit better than that. Yeah. But, um, but it shares... <laughs> Courage is definitely the worst one. We could bring it up to a four if you want. I, who fucking cares? Take care of Courage down. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm going to do that right now. That's so funny. Also, my answer to what I would rewatch, it would be um, Escape from Indoor or whatever. <laughs> next battle of, ba- battle, battle, for of indoor. battle for Indoor. All right. So Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker shares the ranking, the J.J. Abrams movie with It's Alive 3, Island of the Alive. It's uh, yeah. <laughs> it's at least as good as that. If I had to pick which one to rewatch, it's probably It's Alive 3, truly. Because of yes. the, because when he made friends with the Cubans at the near the end. <laughs> we might need more Larry Cohen movies in our lives. And the, the, the courtroom scene at the beginning. Oh. <laughs> Wow, that movie might be too low now that I'm thinking about Karen it. Karen Black is in that movie? Yeah, yeah. So where's my phone? I have it set up. So the third one is uh, 3.75. Divide that by three. And our average, the similar to the prequels, it manages down to a six. If it wasn't for the second one, the lowest. Last one is just so goddamn bad. It's just so felt so. If it had been in, at least on par with the first one, in. it might have averaged out to a seven overall. But this movie yeah. brought it way down. Yeah. It's about. We're saying that the sequel trilogy is around the ballpark of the prequel trilogy. Check the show notes for links and other places to find us. Uh, like, subscribe. 
Uh, leave a comment. We like it when you do that. And next week we begin Movies Are Gay too, in which we explore a lot of movies by and about LGBTQ. Some classic movies full of subtext and some uh, some gay movies throughout modern film history. All right? So we say goodbye to Star Wars Month. We will never watch these movies again. Jar Jar is the key to all of this. Which Star Wars characters could I beat in a fight? Well, today I found a tier list online, and we're going to find out exactly who I think, in my personal opinion, I could beat and who I'd get absolutely crushed by. Without further ado, let's get into it. First character on this list, Jar Jar Biggs. <laughs> this is where the fun begins. I'm not a fool enough to think that I have a chance or that he would just merely crush me. Because I would get crushed by this guy. I've seen him in a fight. I am doing nothing, and I have no hopes of ever, ever even becoming more than a pulp after my fight with him. So I'm putting him on the screen off the ground. 